Welcome everyone and thanks for joining us today. My name is Amanda and today I'll be walking you through the basics of Vault. I'll then pass it over to Blakely who will discuss the officer purchasing card. Please feel free to ask questions as we go through it. I will try to share some questions and answers before I pass it over to Blakely. Just a few things to keep in mind. This is a general Vault webinar. If you have specific questions about how your chapter does something, specific to your organization, please reach out to your appropriate support email. And now I'd like to introduce who Omega Phi is. For more than 30 years, Omega Phi has provided technology solutions to help customers manage their finances, streamline their operations, recruit new members, and communicate with their members. We are based out of Columbus, Georgia. We securely process more than 1.1 million per day for our clients, and have securely processed more than 4 billion since 1992. We're also deeply committed to serving, promoting, and advancing the fraternity and sorority experience. We are passionate about what we do, and it's this passion that has encouraged our clients to trust us to do the heavy lifting so they can focus on their mission and having fun. So let's get start started. What is Vault? Vault is Omega Phi's solution to manage your chapter's billing, member collections, and payments. It allows all officers and advisors a glimpse into the everyday financial operations of your chapter. The Vault homepage is completely customizable to only show you what you want to see. The carousel slider across the top contains links to view action items, recommendations, and more. In the top right hand corner, you'll see different icons. The bell icon notifies you of action items that require your attention, such as assigning new members to a billing group, updating vault users, or reviewing past due bills. The gear icon is the administrative tool. This is where you manage vault permissions and users. You can update custom member fields, and links to contract management features. The question mark provides tips for utilizing whichever page the user is on. The grid icon allows users to navigate between various Omega Phi applications that they have access to. Under the communications menu, this allows you to communicate with your members through Vault. Announcements can be shown to different audiences and tailored to fit the chapter's needs. Examples of announcements are reminders about a chapter meeting, philanthropy events, or to submit study hours. Calendar items can be added to a personal or chapter calendar. Events on the calendar are color-coded. Omega Phi statements and due dates are in blue. National events are in red. If you want to put personal events, those are in orange. And chapter events will be in green. Polls can be created and shown to different audiences to fit the chapter's needs. You can create polls to solicit opinions from your members on where to hold an event or for a major chapter decision. The resource center can be used as an e-filing cabinet. Chapter documents, bylaws, and other forms can be uploaded here. Mass email lets Vault users send mass emails to members and or parents. You can send a mass email when you need to remind your members about a payment deadline, or you can use the mass email templates to remind past due members about their balances owed to the chapter. The member contact information reports are reports that allow you to pull specific contact information from members quickly. You can pull reports of all phone numbers, mailing and email addresses, and emergency contact information. 
The chapter menu is where you'll go to manage your member roster to ensure member statuses are up to date and where you can view or update chapter information such as officers, chapter contacts, and more. The member roster displays a complete chapter roster in two separate tables, the active records and the other records. Active records is a list of members with a member status of new member and initiate. Other records is a list of members with a member status of alumni or alumnus, disassociated, deceased, other, and suspended. Add new members is where you'll add new members after recruitment. New members added in the last seven days will also display here to avoid duplicate entry. If your organization has any national specific requirements regarding the entry of new members, you'll see those details listed here as well. If this option is not available to you, you'll add your new members through your national portal. You'll need to contact your headquarters for more details on how to add your new members. Archive member records removes the member from the roster and several reports. However, their transactions details remain on financial reports. Members with the status of alumnus, disassociated, deceased, other, and suspended are eligible to be archived if they have a zero balance. Update member statuses is where you will update member statuses to initiate, alumnus, deceased, etc. in mass. Keeping member statuses up to date is crucial because national dues and fees billed by your headquarters may be based on these statuses. We recommend you update member statuses at the beginning and end of each term. Member initiation reporting guidelines vary by organization. If your organization requires you to submit new members through Vault, national specific instructions will be viewable here. Chapter information is a place to update chapter specific data. Under chapter detail, this displays contact, tax, and other information for the chapter. The officers list both undergraduate, non-undergraduate, and house corporation officers. From here, you can add new officers or edit existing officers. I do want to note that any undergraduate members listed under the undergraduate officers listing are automatically granted access to manage the communications menu on Vault. This allows officers to send mass emails as well as give them ability to add chapter calendar items, polls, announcements, and resource center documents. Remember, you can edit an officer's vault permissions by selecting the gear icon in the top right-hand corner of vault. Under the house menu, you'll see housing-related information. House detail is used to maintain records for a chapter house, property, or meeting space. Contract management provides a better way for your chapter or house corporation to manage contracts and agreements with members and parents. A few examples of contracts and or agreements you can upload are lease agreements, risk management agreements, social media agreements, parking contracts, and promissory notes. The billing menu is where you'll go to ensure your members are receiving the correct charges each term, turn billing on or off for a member, set up the scheduled charges for the next semester, add charges for t-shirt, events, fines, etc., and so much more. The member list by billing group provides a member list that can be sorted by column. A member's billing group determines which scheduled charges will apply to their account on each billing cycle's bill on date.
A member's billing status determines if scheduled charges auto-assess to a member's account. If active displays in the member's billing status field, the system will auto-assess scheduled charges based on the member's billing group assignment. If inactive displays, no new scheduled charges assess. However, if the member owes a balance, they will continue to receive statements from Omega Phi until their balance is zero. Assign members without a billing group tells you which members are listed in a temporary billing group. When a user adds new members and the user does not have user rights to manage billing, the new members do not have a billing group assignment. It is important to assign billing groups immediately so the members receive a statement. Under the Review, Roster, and Billing Discrepancies, this displays members whose billing status conflicts with their member status. It allows users to update these statuses. For example, if a member status equals alumnus, but billing status equals active, typically members with a member status of alumnus should have an inactive billing status and vice versa. Under statement details, you'll see items that directly correlate with member statements. The billing overview displays an overview of charges scheduled for a particular term. Winter, spring, summer, fall, according to cycle, billing type, transaction description, and account. Billing dates provides a list of all scheduled billing cycles. Each billing cycle has four dates. The bill on is the date scheduled charges assessed to member accounts in accordance with their billing status and billing group. Statement on is the date statements processed and are sent to members. Due on is the due date that appears on the statement. And late after is the date unpaid, unpaid balances age and late fees assessed. If your chapter has a late fee set up in billing options, that is when the late fee will assess. The statement contact information or the chapter's primary contact for finances will appear on member statements, in addition to Omega Phi's customer service information. The statement message is a customizable message that appears at the bottom of your member statements. Due to space limitations, there is a maximum character limit of 255. The delinquency messages will appear if a member's account is delinquent. Omega Phi is required to provide written notification to members of their delinquency in accordance with consumer protection laws. You can select the link to view examples of the delinquency messages that appear on statements. Late fee and prepayment options provides the chapter preferences for late fees and prepayment discounts. Amounts and criteria for both options are set by the chapter or headquarters if you have a national late fee. Late fees can be processed to delinquent member accounts based on a flat rate or a percentage of the member's balance. Also, a late fee threshold can be set so member balances lower than the threshold are not charged a late fee. Prepayment discounts can be set by billing group for flexibility. Member payments allows you to enter payments for up to 15 payments received locally. To record a payment, you'll select the member and then you'll select the payment method. You'll enter the check number if applicable and then you'll enter the amount and then you'll click create payment to enter the payment. Please note to eliminate liability for chapter officers and reduce trips to the bank, instruct your members to pay Omega Phi directly. Members can pay online via their My Omega Phi account with the My Omega Phi mobile app by bell or over the phone. 
The payments received report provides a summary of payments received within a specified date range. This report is divided into two sections. The top section provides a list of member payments within the selected date range. The summary at the bottom has the total payments received locally and total payments received by Omega-5. The auto pay report is a list of members who establish auto pay on their My Omega Phi account. There are two ways to add miscellaneous transactions to member accounts for t-shirts, events, fines, etc. You can add transactions in mass. This lets you create up to 15 transactions for multiple members accounts, or you can add transactions to a group. This lets you create transactions to a group of members at once. Once you create transactions, they are in a status of pending. View pending transactions is a list of transactions that will post overnight. Omega Phi posts transactions daily at approximately 3.45 a.m. Eastern. Chapter created pending transactions are editable until the transaction posts to members' accounts. The icon in the first column of the list of transactions indicates that the transaction was entered by the chapter or by Omega Phi. So you can just hover over it and it will let you know who created it. Transaction search allows Vault users to search for specific transactions on a member account using any of the given criteria. The delinquent accounts section provides resources on how to manage member accounts and a delinquent status. The aging detail provides an aging summary of the whole chapter to indicate the aging status of outstanding statements. It also provides an aging status on a member by member basis sorting the members into their appropriate past due status, current, past due, severely past due, pending charge off and charge off. These past due statuses correspond with how many billing cycles past due a member is. Delinquency actions is a tool to document payment arrangements or notes about actions taken against delinquent members. It provides an at-a-glance view of statistics that directly relate to successful collections for members with a delinquent balance. Send Members to Collections houses a list of members in the charge-off status that are eligible for collections. This page assists chapter leaders in reviewing accounts to determine which members to send to collections. Late fee management allows vault users the ability to turn off late fees for specific members who have payment arrangements or a hardship. We recommend you regularly review members with late fees held to ensure members adhere to payment arrangements and remove the hold on late fees when appropriate. The report section has helpful member reports you can easily access to ensure members are up to date on payments. The member income report is a detailed accounting of all member income during the date range selected. There are three levels of the report. The balances by income account report contains a list of all members, a breakdown of each member's balance by income account, and includes subtotals of balances owed for each income account. Under administrative tools, you'll find the donation form. This form can help you collect funds and information for alumni donations and gifts, special event registrations and or chapter fundraisers. Customize the form by choosing your own color, title, text, instructions, and contact information. After you create your form, you can provide interested donors or event attendees with a direct web address or place a link to the form on your chapter's website. Payment can be remitted by Visa, MasterCard, America Express, or Discover. Under the Order Graphic Cow t-shirts, this allows officers to create t-shirts for members to order using Graphic Cow. 
Members are notified via email and on My Omega Phi that a t-shirt is available for order. They can view an image of the t-shirt before placing their order online. Bill Pay is Omega Phi's accounts payable solution. We'll highlight this area of vault, but we do have a recorded Bill Pay webinar in our help center under the videos webinar section. We encourage you to view that as well. The registers section shows bill pay fund registers and officer purchasing cards, which Blakely will go into more detail in just a moment. Bill pay funds are listed with the available balance, which includes all process transactions, pending deposits, pending payments, and pending transfers. Payments allows you to view and add outstanding bills approve them for payment, and view pending and scheduled payments. You have the option to print checks locally, to issue reimbursements to members, or pay your vendors directly. Printing checks locally requires specific check stock to print your checks on. Checks cannot be printed on regular paper, nor can they be printed on non-Omega-5 check stock. If you'd like to order Omega Phi check stock, please contact Omega Phi and send your shipping address along with which check stock package you'd like to purchase. The accounting section is where you'll go to build a chapter budget, pull financial reports for an executive board meeting, or file your chapter's taxes. One thing to point out here is the vault billing fee details. Omega Phi will calculate the chapter's total for the term based on the number of active status members on the chapter's billing roster. We then withhold a percentage of each payment until we collect the total amount for the term. Vault billing fee details provides a breakdown of the fees, how much the total fee for the term is, how much has been collected, and the balance at any given point during the term. And lastly, as I mentioned earlier, our Get Help section has general resources and videos to help you navigate and complete tasks within Vault. You can search specific words or phrases and articles matching your search, and articles matching your search will populate to help you find the answers you need. I want to point out our new section for incoming officers or even for seasoned officers if you'd like to refresh your memory on some things. If you click on click here, it will give you detailed instructions on what you need to do. Questions. So give me just a moment. I'm going to transfer this over to Blakely and she will go into more detail about the officer purchasing card. Thanks, Amanda. So um, let's talk a little bit about officer purchasing cards. The officer purchasing card is Omega Phi's benefit to using our vault bill pay services. A Megabyte Officer Purchasing Visa Prepaid Card is a um, safe and convenient way to make purchases for your chapter. So from the Officer Purchasing Card screen, you can view all of the cards associated with your chapters, bill, pay accounts, um, and you can also view the balances on all of the cards, transfer funds to any active card, um, select a card from the list to view the card register, add a new card, and view any pending um, card invites. So to add a new card, you'll just select Add Card. If you're adding the card for yourself, um, you'll select For Me and complete the form. And if you're adding a new card for like another officer um, or advisor, you'll select For Others and then complete the form by selecting the name from the pick list um, and then click Submit. The person that you picked will then receive an email invite with details on the program and uh, further instructions for enrollment. So each chapter is eligible for one free card, um, and then each additional card ordered costs uh, $10 per month, but it's assessed annually in one installment of $120. Having the card will give you quick and secure access to the funds within bill pay. Um, this gives you the ability to uh, load and unload money from your bill pay as needed. Uh, this can be used for any sort of transactions at a store or online. And um, there are some really great benefits to this program that uh, help control spending. Um, your officers will only have access to the money within that card, however much you choose to load onto that card, um, is how much they have available to them to spend. 
So it can uh, also help prevent any sort of potential fraud or theft since you can load or unload the money as needed. Um, if the card was ever misplaced, um, you can just make sure to log into your Vault account to unload it and that protects your chapter's funds. Every time you use that card, those transactions are gonna populate within Vault. Um, and you can find that under the alerts or the notifications icon, as well as the review card transactions page. From here, you will be able to update the income or the expense category for that specific transaction. Um, and you can do that by selecting the transaction and then selecting the expense category from the dropdown. Uh, when you submit it, it will update the information in your reporting so that when you're checking your expenditure reports, it's gonna show you exactly um, where those funds went. Uh, so for example, you can update a certain transaction to show um, that it was for recruitment or maybe it was for like an officer retreat. Um, and then that way your reporting is, is detailed enough that you can kind of quickly take a look and see um, how you, uh, your officers are using their funds. Also within the officer purchasing card program, we have two different roles. Um, we have card holders or card managers. Um, so a card holder is someone um, you know, that can, uh, that has their card um, within their name and that they're able to use that card to, um, you know, make purchases uh, on behalf of the chapter. Um, a card manager is someone that has the ability to move money on or off of the card as needed. So not every card holder has to be a card manager and not every card manager has to have a card. Um, you can have multiple officers or advisors be card managers. So for example, um, like the president, the treasurer and the chapter advisor could have access to uh, load or unload money. Um, and then you can update that within user access, which I'll show you next um, as an added layer of protection. Uh, there is separate user access when it comes to bill pay. When we come to the user access page, um, you'll be able to see where we're gonna add that in. Um, but you'll have the ability to um, view bills, enter bills, manage your vendors, and manage the cards. So we can give permission to people as needed. Um, and then you can uh, update user access for the officer purchasing cards um, on a regular basis. So you really wanna make that uh, a priority as you're transitioning into the role. Um, and then uh, make sure that you're removing access for folks who no longer need to have bill pay access. So past, past treasurers and presidents, um, if you have inactive chapter advisors who no longer are, are um, advising uh, those roles, um, you wanna make sure that that is updated. Here are a few tips to get the most out of your card. Um, first, you don't wanna share your card with anyone, including other officers or members. Um, Another tip is that if you have a, a notification about fraudulent charges and it's incorrect, um, you can call Brightwell's fraud department at 404-855-2516. Um, that number is also available in our help center um, under the bill pay section. Uh, you can use only secure and trusted websites for online purchases. Um, you know, really make sure that you are uh, using that card safely. Um, and uh, that you're using it only on uh, websites that have uh, good security and um, also that you're not adding it to your account on that website. So instead of keeping it like most accounts have like an account wallet, um, adding your bill pay card um, to the account wallet is not recommended just for uh, that added degree of uh, safety for your chapter. Um, there is, uh, this is also a prepaid card. so. Um, you know, it's best practice to only keep the money you need on that card at any given time. So any excess funds, you wanna transfer those back to your bill pay fund as soon as possible. Um, if you use your card for lodging expenses, like, you know, a hotel or an Airbnb, um, expect that an additional 20% hold on your available funds for security measures um, is, is gonna show up. So we encourage you to go ahead and load funds on your card that will cover that additional amount. It's also good practice to regularly review your transactions. Um, make sure that you're logging in and uh, taking a look at uh, what transactions are coming through on your account um, for all of your card holders to make sure that everything looks um, legit and that you're not seeing anything that you know may be um, a fraudulent charge. It's also great practice to um, take a picture or a screenshot of your receipt immediately after purchase. Um, depending on what your specific organization's reporting requirements are for your officers, how you guys wanna keep up with the expenses, um, sort of depends on what that process will look like in terms of submitting those expenses. But um, 
definitely as you know encourage any card holders to make sure that they are um, saving and then submitting through the proper channels um, those expense reports so that you can you have the um, the receipt the itemized receipts on file if you've ordered a card but you haven't received it yet um, it will arrive in a plain white envelope addressed to you within 10 to 14 days of the enrollment date um, so once you receive your card immediately activate it and after your new card is activated be certain to deactivate the cards like i said before um, for any previous card holders or officers who no longer need uh, access to your bill pay funds um, also you know it's a good idea to just keep an eye on our help center um, you'll, like Amanda has mentioned before, if you select the Get Help button, um, we have a whole section on bill pay and officer purchasing cards to help you along the way. Um, we have these tips and tricks listed for you there, uh, as well as some um, how-tos, walkthroughs, um, and more. And of course, if you don't have the answer um, that you're looking for in the knowledge base, you can click on the support button um, and reach out to us, and we would be happy to... Um, we hope that you found this webinar helpful today. We're going to stick around for a few minutes, um, answer any questions that you may have. Um, I see that someone said, how do you get the officer purchasing card set up for the very first time uh, for a new chapter? Um, so as long as you have access, all you have to do is go under bill pay um, and select the officer purchasing card link. Um, and then uh, you can order it from there. Um, if you're having trouble getting access, um, you know, if you go and click that link and it comes up with an error message, um, your access levels may not be properly set up. So just reach out to your support team email uh, and they can assist you with that further. Uh, somebody also asked if the chapter advisor should have access to the card and the administration of that card. Um, that is completely up to each chapter. So the nice thing about um, our bill pay program and these officer purchasing cards is that you can set up um, the user access levels to exactly what works for your specific situation. Um, if you have a, a chapter advisor who would be making purchases on behalf of the, uh, the chapter for any reason, yes, they can have a card. Um, it's also fine for them to have administration of the card or not, depending on sort of uh, what their role with your chapter is. And so that's kind of really be different for each uh, individual chapter. Um, again, I would say, you know, if you have questions about your specific situation, um, you can uh, definitely reach out to your support team um, and we can kind of help you work through that. So I have a question here asking if someone stops paying and becomes inactive, what that would be labeled as. I'm gonna assume that's in reference to something that Amanda was covering earlier um, in, in reference to um, like member statuses. Um, so if you have a member for whatever reason has gone inactive, so whether that's like depledging or um, maybe they've transferred schools, whatever, um, you're going to uh, update their member status and their billing status. So um, again, member status is what they're standing with your headquarters uh, in relation to your chapter is. Um, and so that's gonna, the way that you do that and what their official member status will be once they become inactive is gonna have um, a specific, you know, depends specifically on why they're no longer with the chapter and how your headquarters handles, um, handles membership reporting. Um, and things like that. So if you have questions about that specifically, about updating those member statuses, um, you can reach out to your support team um, and the support folks will um, be in touch with you and help help work through that with you. Um, that's gonna differ based on each national organization. Um, in terms of what their billing status would be, so billing status is just, are they being billed or not? Uh, you're gonna update their billing status to inactive. Um, and then there's, uh, a list of reasons that you'll choose. So again, it's gonna depend on the situation for this person, um, but let's say that they are abroad for the semester, so they're no longer paying bills, you'll just update that, um, their billing status to inactive and update the, the reason to abroad. Okay, so we have a question, how they have managed access to bill pay, but they have managed access to bill pay, but they can't, um, they can't get into it. So you go to bill pay, you go to user access, and because you have manage access to it, you'll just click into your name, and then you'll go in 
and you'll give yourself under this bill pay global permissions and you can give yourself grant yourself permission and you'll be able to um, give yourself permissions to bill pay and if you have if that doesn't work for you then just reach out to your support team and they'll be able to help you further if you have a question another question for us that pops up um in the meantime like i said if you'll reach out to your your usual support email um with that question um and let them know that came from the webinar we'll, we'll make sure to get you the answers that you need um amanda anything else before we say goodbye nope that's all, all thanks, right. everyone. great thanks guys appreciate you guys coming today and we look forward to seeing you um at future officer training events